In this section, we'll look at what a fish stock is and the boundaries that are important to its management. So, what's a fish stock? The first thing to look at is boundaries that affect how, when and where fish are distributed. In most cases, these boundaries fall into three main categories, physical, chemical and biological. Physical boundaries are often easy to see and understand. Some examples are land separation, water temperature and water depth. Other boundaries are not so obvious. A chemical boundary might be the interface between fresh and salt water or oxygen levels. Biological boundaries might come about from predators or competition for food. The important thing to remember is that these boundaries may change over space and time. So, to help illustrate the concept of boundaries, let's look at one of our case study fisheries. Well, what type of species you're going to catch in different types of depths, you know what I mean? Obviously, there's a mixing in depths. Say, if you, if you work in, say, in 100 and, or 250 metres, you can still catch flathead, and you can still catch flathead in, in, in 50 metres. But you very rarely get ling in, you might get ling in 600 uh, metres, but you would never get them in 50 metres. Tony only works in a small area of the Pinklings range, which are also found in New Zealand and South America. In Australia, their distribution extends from central New South Wales around southern Australia to the southwest of Western Australia. Beyond this range, we assume the conditions are not suitable for pink ling because they're not found there. The depth boundaries for pink ling are about 40 to 900 metres. In terms of chemical boundaries, pinkling are restricted to salt water only and won't travel up a river. The biological boundaries restricting pinkling are hard to define, but may include competition with similar species at the edges of their range. OK, so that's a bit about boundaries and the factors that may explain the distribution of a species. Let's now look at the concept of a fish stock. In Australia, the population of pink ling is split into two different stocks. The two stocks are separated at about longitude 147 degrees. The pink ling in these two areas don't mix or interbreed and so are considered biologically separate. For these reasons, we call them different stocks. Within a stock's boundary, however, the fish are assumed to mix with few limitations. So, for example, pink ling to the west of longitude 147 will not breed to any great extent with pink ling from the east of 147. This means that fishing on one stock will have almost no effect on the size of any other stock. Also, within a stock, fish can be expected to have similar biological characteristics, like birth rates and growth rates. What this means is that to ensure sustainable fishing, these stocks need to be managed separately. Anywhere from 20 metres out, out to 1,000 metres, you know. Depends on the day, uh, the temperature of the water and those type of things, you know. The southern bluefin tuna that Dodgy's catching are part of a massive fish stock that ranges throughout the oceans of the southern hemisphere. It's known as a high seas straddling fish stock. This means the southern bluefin tuna stock crosses management boundaries and is managed jointly between nations. So, in essence, a fish stock is a single species of fish that breeds, grows and moves within boundaries. And that is how it should be managed. Now we understand what a fish stock is, in the next section we'll be looking at how fish stocks grow through recruitment.